Hi everyone, it's Elaine Beck here and we are on It's Not About Us. And we are so excited because our show is now on CPAC now. And we're excited because we have the CEO of CPAC sitting right here and he's gonna be part of all of this today. Matt, you know, we were just talking about how excited we were that, that we're starting all of this in Israel. We're setting in Jerusalem. And the factor that we're starting at period is amazing. But to start where all things started yeah. is fantastic. You know, and, and, and what's amazing is when you get into the history of it all, Yeah, it really wasn't that long ago, <laughs> you know? To I don't me, know. I think that's stressing a little bit, Matt. <laughs> I don't know, but it's like, you know, you, you hear about millions of years here and millions of years there, and you start to go through all the genealogy in the Bible and everything else and this shared tradition that we have with the Jewish people. Ah, and yes. It's such a commonality when they start talking about the Old Testament. And uh, and I was explaining to our tour guide the other day that the you can't understand the New Testament without understanding the Old Testament. So like there's such right. a there's such a great bond. But you know, this place right behind us, you know? It's amazing. It's amazing. Yes. A couple thousand years ago and we were just talking about that's you know, Jesus loved that city so much mm -hmm. that he wept for that oh, city and for yes. the people of that city. Oh, you yes. Know, they don't account too many times when Jesus wept, right? Right. So that's uh, that's an amazing thing. So it's an honor to be able to be here. Yeah, and and I'm excited about being on CPAC now. I mean- We're excited. I'm Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, we are. Thank you. I, I think the main excitement is the fact that, um, as I shared with, with the people that we were talking with this morning, Matt, that CPAC is leaving such a great, um, it's leading the way in bringing peoples and countries and everybody together that are like-minded and that, that love God and country. No matter which country they're in, they love God first and country. And, and that to me is, you know, when I go to, when I went to my first CPAC, and uh, in the United States, our own, uh, the first one I went to, I went home floating because if you want to have the adventure of your life, you need to show up at a CPAC and be with people that love you and agree with you and look at you and smile and never look away and never roll their eyes at you and never question you. They, they love and accept you for who you are and for the, the things that we see eye to eye on. It's amazing. And I, I and thank you for that. And I want to say thank you for agreeing to be on CPAC now. It's it's quite a wonderful uh, enterprise we've started here. Yes. Um, we are bringing in uh, interesting voices mm -hmm. with mostly the same viewpoints probably on politics and religion and such. But different experience, life experiences. Sure. And uh, and I just feel like wherever we go with CPAC, it's the same problem we have in America. Where do you go to find out what's really going on? Right. Who do you listen to? Amen. And I think you're gonna play an important role in making sure people can understand what's really going down. Right, right. And I, can I say one thing on the CPAC thing? Yes, that's such a nice thing to say about how you feel better mm -hmm. because you have thousands of people all ages, but, right. a, but a lot of kids. Right. And, uh, but I have to say, when you go do something internationally right. with CPAC, there's nothing like that. That's true. Being in that hall the other day with 2,500 uh, Israelis, I assume almost all Israelis, uh, who spent some money to be there, um, uh, and and just the outpouring after, I get to do, I get, I get, I get uh, remunerated in a way that's different from everyone else. Uh, uh, but when I left that Hangar 11, they call it, um, I was walking on the streets with our group. We have right, a nice right. delegation here. Sure. And these kids recognized me. Mm -hmm. And they started chanting my name. And they started um, asking for selfies. And they thanked me for bringing CPEC to Israel. And I just had this moment. And it's just like, that's what's cooler than that, than this appreciation with two such important countries. Right. Both geopolitically today, but also just like biblically. That's exactly. Just, to be able to be in the middle of that exactly. is, is very special. Right, right. Well, you know, God puts us 
where he wants us yeah. if we allow him. Yeah. And and I suggest that we all try and do that yeah. every day. By the way, Elaine, just so everybody knows, Elaine does one of the roles she's playing at CPAC is to remind me to do that, right? God's <laughs> got to be at the center. It, he does. Yeah. He yeah. does. And, and you know, we all uh, have to think about our world. Yeah. I mean, you have five beautiful daughters mm-hmm. and a wonderful wife and a great mother. I just love your entire family. Yeah. And but their responsibility and, and they, they need you and you're needed in so many other ways. And yet, you know, you have to give of yourself in this so much of yourself, you know, and I admire that in you that, that you keep that balance, but it's not easy. And we all need people to build this up yes, we do. And, and, and to encourage us every day, no matter, no matter what good has happened in our life, life is still going on. And as the Bible says, there will always be trials, it, not temporarily or once in a while, always is the word. And, and that's what life is about. We live in an evil, wicked world. And so we have the opportunity, though, with God's help, with Jesus's help to overcome because he's already done that for us. That's exactly right. So it, it's just so exciting. And um, I think some of the other things that... Um, I just want to share with everybody is uh, one of my main goals, uh, as Matt knows, is to help the seniors of this country, people that are more in my age group, to understand that, you know, yes, we've made mistakes and and we've uh, one of our largest failures is to allow people to come in and start telling us and uh, what's the word, um, taking our children and leading them around, telling us what we can and can't do with them. And um, it, it, it just breaks my heart. I see families um, going through things that I never thought could even be humanly possible on this earth to see. Um, gender identity, um, CRT, all this stuff that is is just so sad and so bad. But now the seniors, I want to speak to them in particular by the, through this show. I want them to know that you have an opportunity to change that and turn it back around. Because all those little kids that are out there that may be your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, or someone else's, your cousins, your nieces, your, your neighbors, you know, they all need you to speak up and tell them the truth about what it was like to live in the memorable generations that we lived in, where we felt lived every day in a free country, where we could pray anywhere, uh, including we did it in school, say the Pledge of Allegiance every day. We had a flag in every classroom. Of course you did. A flag in every classroom, because every classroom every morning, over the announcements even, they come in and say, now, Everyone stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance, and we do it in every class. And then we would pray as well, all together, in community. And we all know that family and community is what is suffering in our country. Yeah. And it's what we need to bring back together. Mm-hmm. And as uh, one of the um, uh, wonderful people that I met here, um, Rabbi Shlomo, Himes, and I, I can't say it the way he does with that little that, catch that, in the that back. Little, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. But he, he's just wonderful. And, and as he shared with me that, you know, familyism should be the next ism. You know, we have all these other ones that are negative. Let's get the family back together. It's the truth. And, and the seniors, we have this great role to play because, you know, here we are, we're retiring. That's what I call it, you know, because being retired is not in the Bible. It really isn't. If it is, somebody please show me. (laughs) Because we're supposed to serve God till the day we die. Mm. Are we not? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And so you have an opportunity, though, to surround these children, share your stories. We're going to write a book, uh, a a whole um, uh, huge amount of books on based on your history to tell them and share so that they can grow knowing what this country was based on and built on and the true history. 
Let, let's turn all of this around. We have an opportunity. Once we're gone, who do they have? I mean, I hate yeah, to say it that way. That's right. But, but we can't let our stories die and, and the history, the most current history, be gone from these children. And it, it's such an important role, and I'm so excited about it. Well, you know, the, I, I keep going back to, like, literally the old city of Jerusalem is right over our shoulders, and this is what the Jewish people First of all, they were the chosen people of God, and he wanted them to not be Amen. extinguished, despite every attempt to extinguish them throughout history. But what they understand is exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. You could actually see it on the streets. Oh, yeah. The old teaching the young. This uh, is how you pray. Uh, this is what you wear. This is how we respect God and what we eat. We're going to go to a Shabbat dinner tonight. You yes. Know, we're going to see this is what they do. And it's, you know what they do it all around? The family. We went to the home of a very prominent um, American who lives in Israel the other night. And you, his family was all over. Right. And it wasn't they were considered all there. weird or, you know, strange. It was like, of course, your family is there. Right. Everything we do with these uh with with the Jewish people that we've come in contact here and the Christians we've come in contact here. It's all about the family. Uh, they understand that America has to recapture this idea. Right. We have this idea that families are these dysfunctional. That's the word we love to use. These dysfunctional entities that teach misconceptions to young people. We need the government to help mm, us know mm, what's right mm, and wrong. Mm. And and they, they understand over here that that's a toxic problem. Right. And, you know, I had a former senator say this to me at our CPAC in Hungary, it just really struck me, Elaine. Um, uh, I want your reaction to this. He said, if we want kids to get married, and if we want people to have families and have mm -hmm. kids, mm -hmm. we should probably start talking about how great it is. Yeah. And I just hit well, me because I'm so blessed. And I, you know, I'm not the world's greatest husband or anything, but like, I'm so lucky. The, the greatest decision I ever even thought about making was asking mercy to marry me and then to have to not be restrained on our children we just decided we'd have as many kids as god wanted to give us that's part of our belief system and these are the greatest decisions i i could have ever thought about making i mean i don't even know what what do young men think when they're saying oh my gosh a ball and chain and children and obligate well who wants that well you know what you should want it yeah you should embrace it yeah well you, do you know, agree with this oh absolutely yeah. and, and the thing is is we touched on this again yesterday. It's about teaching. You know, I was sharing with, with the rabbi that when I was in school, we took home ec. So the women, we, we learned how to make a bed, take care of a home, hold a baby, change a baby. We were too young to have children, but we were being taught that giving love and, and that what it's like to be responsible responsibility. Too many young people in our society don't know what responsibility are because they weren't taught, they're not taught it in school. That's right. And so many of them, their parents both work or many of the parents are absent out of the family. That's right. And that's because they're not taught the responsibility of staying married, finding somebody that you know that even in the trials, I mean, come on, like you said, nobody's perfect in a marriage, not you, not mercy, okay? And there's gonna be differences, but that's the challenge of life in all things. In all things. And, and if you can't stand up and make the most of whatever the situation is, if you can't love uh, not so much unconditionally, but fervently and determinedly, and, and without allowing distractions and things to get in, then that it's you that needs to work on you. That's right. You know, and I just think it's so amazing that the people here in um, Israel are so into teaching the young people everything, uh, how, to, how to cook, how to eat, how to treat their adults. How, you know, I remember when I was a kid, Matt, we never said, I would have never called you Matt as a child. I would have said, Mr. So-and-so. That's yeah. right. Ma'am. Our teachers, yeah. our teachers were 
Mr. or Mrs. Our our neighbors even, you mm-hmm. know, we didn't call anybody by their first name. Mm-hmm. And and you don't hear the young people here ever. I mean, I've been out in, into the, the shops and into the streets and all over. I have never heard one of them even act like they were going to say something foul. Yeah, I agree with that. And I'll never forget, I was 12 years old before I ever heard yeah. an evil word like that. Yeah. 12 years old. Yeah. Okay. And nowadays, these kids hear it every day on the TV, the in, radio, in their the music, in their mu- in everything. Yeah. You yeah. know. No, no, we have a, we have a, we we have just kind of embraced the uh, smut and perversity of. Well, yeah. Of, in in a casual way, I keep saying it's chic evil. It's like they almost try to glamorize uh, what's bringing us down. And you know, part of the part of the reason why we brought the delegation here. Elaine, um, and we're honored that you're on it, is it's about helping Israel. Mm-hmm. CPAC comes to Israel to help them politically, right. help them understand how you do grassroots politics. But really the hope is the delegation comes here right. and Israel helps the people in the delegation. Amen. And the, and the, it the does. religious overtones of this most sacred place. And then when we go back, we're changed. Right. And, you know, if you're if you're fighting communism in Asia and you go to a CPAC in Japan or Korea, it's it's different. It's not mm-hmm. like this. No, D- different, different. You come back with different lessons. You go to Hungary, uh, different lessons. Um, I have unique and special takeaways from all of them. But what you just said here, um, the people of God uh, think about God on a regular basis. Right. Even, the, even the non-religious Jews understand these basic concepts, like you're Absolutely. not going to have a civilization if you don't teach your kids respect. Yeah. If you don't teach your kids to be pious, if you don't teach your kids um, these virtues, and uh, and uh, it's very impressive to me. And I I really think America's got to think about, you know, Donald Trump used that great phrase, "Make America Great Again." Ronald Reagan used that phrase. Nobody knows. Do you know who's the first person to say that phrase at CPAC? Tell me. It was me. <laughs> it's <laughs> ironic. I wrote out a speech the first year I was elected chairman, and I ended that speech. Uh, it was before we knew who the president was going to be in 2016. We didn't even know if it was going to be a Republican president. Right. And I said, I thought that this that CPAC, because we had all the candidates there, mm-hmm. that that CPAC would um, uh, pick help pick the next president, that that president would respect the Constitution right. and begin to make America great again. Right. But what really does make America great? It's got to be our kids they it's, gotta get it's the, job the people. Done. We are right. the, we are the government. Supposedly, right. we don't run it anymore. Yeah. But we're supposed to be the government, That's right? right? Yeah. And I mean, it's all based on we the people. That's right. Um, you know, you're, you're saying so many things that are so so powerful and and just gets my mind going on things. But I think the main thing that it boils down to is um, knowing that we have failed our children Mm -hmm. in the United States. We have gotten so involved in survival of the fittest and being selfish and looking out for me, 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 and just do it, accepting all things instead of doing what they do here that no matter who you see here, they are practicing what they preach every day. Um, I I remember in the United States, for instance, when every Sunday, all the stores were closed. You couldn't go to a restaurant or you couldn't go to uh, buy something in a store or anything. It was the day of rest as it's meant to be, yeah. according to the Bible. Yeah, We have got to get back to the biblical values. Mm-hmm period, Mm -hmm. in our everyday life, in our schools, in our homes. The family should be the center of that. Mm -hmm. And we've lost sight of that. We've got to get it back. Matt, um, uh, I'm going to go to a break. Uh, We've talked on and on. I'm sure we'll have to get this put together right to to present it. But it's just wonderful talking to you and, and being here. So Uh, We're going to go to a break and we'll be right back.
Hey everyone, Elaine Beck here, and we're back with It's Not About Us, the show that talks mainly about what God's purpose is for us and how we need to let him lead us. And uh, we are here with Matt Schlapp, and he's the CEO of Crap, no, I mean CPAC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to have fun with this because, you know, that's what life is about, yeah. taking the serious and, and that's what I have always said about, it's not about us because we had the radio show, of course, that we ha still have uh, and the podcast um, longer than this. We've just started the new show and it's not about us is so important to realize that ultimately nothing else really matters other than where we go and how we support the Lord and Savior that created us, the that's God, right. the creator of this earth. That's right. It, we answer ultimately to that and only that, Yeah, you know, and, and how exciting that we have opportunities to do his will. Yeah. The, uh, I was, I was thinking yesterday was a big day for us. We, uh, went to the sea of Galilee. We went to the river Jordan. Um, you know, I was with my whole family, uh, and we were imagining, you know, where in the Jordan did, John the Baptist, uh, John the Baptist baptized Jesus, and you know the Sea of Galilee. You know the majority of the disciples were fishermen. And right, right. The, you know, it looks just like it did. That's one of the things that's amazing when you come here. I guess that's one of the things when you're basically a desert country. Right. That you know there's not like it still looks very much like it did, <laughs> and uh, and beautiful, just breathtakingly beautiful. But yeah, you, you, you it just brings it all home. So we we went to the um, place where uh, Jesus preached on the Beatitudes. Right. And for non-Christians, they always take the Beatitudes and they think it's more of like a social justice gospel about, you know, uh, you making sure we're sharing with everyone, which is an important part of, of our faith. But, you know, to me, the Beatitudes are, they're much different, especially if you think about America today. It's like, you know, Blessed are um, those who uh, blessed are those who seek uh, justice. Righteousness. Well, yeah, but that's the key word, right? Righteousness. Right. 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 That's that's the key. We don't even know what that word means anymore. Uh, yeah, you know, you think righteousness. We're taught to believe that that means like pride and arrogance and like being strong. Mm -hmm. But no, righteousness is seeking doing what God wants you to do. Exactly. Taking God's truth and put it. So like I was trying to explain to them that um, it was God's way of saying, you know, I want you to go out there and be not necessarily warriors for social justice. I want you to be warriors for justice. Right. Like I want you to speak up. I right. want you to, I, you know, if you do that, you will be persecuted. Yeah. And think about it politically. That's just another way for saying cancel culture. Right. You know, exactly. I write about this in my book. It's like when you go out there and say these things, they are going to pound you for saying it. Right. And right. to be at the place on that mount that looks much the same. And there's a beautiful little church there. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and to think about that, God was calling us. He wasn't calling us to set up government programs to redistribute wealth. Right. That's not what that, that no. sermon was about. No. It was like, look, my message is not always easy. Right. You've got to do this. Right. And if you do, you will be rewarded, even if you're lowly, even if you're poor, even if you don't have a lot of power. Absolutely. Don't worry. No. Don't worry about all that. No. It'll all be fine. Right. That's what he's saying. Your reward is going to be great. Right. So, you know, it was like it was a very moving thing. And I think moving for the daughters. And then we spent the evening dancing on a boat, <laughs> uh, literally dancing. Everyone was dancing. Uh, on the Sea of Galilee. And it was just like, you know, it was like we got to see all of that at once, which is wow. deeply spiritual, deeply moving, learning, right. and then dancing, right. having some fun, exactly. kicking up your heels. Yes. Um, yes. That's been all part of this experience. Yes. I, I think that's wonderful. And I I'm sorry I, I had to miss it. But no, it sounds like you were doing some other really, really, really fascinating stuff. Well, you know, that's part of what we're supposed to understand is that God made us each different yeah. and we all have our own purpose Yes, and he uses us 
in so many ways. And when you get to be my age, you realize that there's a different season in your life that just keeps changing. And, and God puts you through a different page in your life, a different season, a different time. And right now I'm in a season where I have the privilege and uh, the opportunity to help younger people understand this. And so one of the things that I'm definitely going to do with CPAC now is constantly challenge the seniors to do things like, for number one, go to CPAC yeah. because be there with the people that are like-minded and, and learn the different ways that you can participate to undo the wrongs. That is so important. That, that's, that's a great place to start. Uh, start also by, you know, we talk about prayer all the time. Prayer is a great word, but I call it something else. Just continue to have your conversations with God. And that's what they are. It's a conversation. It's a chance to open your heart up, not just to ask for things, but to praise him, to thank him, to lean on him and tell him the stories of where you want to go and he will answer it. And, and I love that. And so I'm challenging all the seniors right it. now, and I will continue to do this, to step up, find that place. You know, I love too, Matt, that think about the seniors out there right now. There are seniors that they have done every walk of life there is, every walk. There's people alive that were writers and teachers and scholars and, and uh, doctors and lawyers and Indian chiefs, <laughs> yeah. whatever. It's amazing. We all have something to give. And all of these young people, tell them what it was like. You know, I laugh because I, I literally am going to write a, a little book, start a book for children after I get through writing my book, which I'm working on now. But that book for children it's going to be me telling what it was like when I was a little girl. And it's going to have silly things in it like, okay, guys, yeah, I lived in homes where we had outhouses. There was no such thing as bathrooms back then and where I lived in a coal mining town, mm -hmm. okay? But how many little kids can learn from that? I'll never forget when my son, now by this time, of course, I'm well past that. Uh, I have a nice home and we have everything going for us. And I've got this little guy, he's three and a half at the time, and his friend's over. And they come running in the kitchen one day, and they're like, oh, mom, mom, we have something to ask you. And I'm like, what? And he's like, what was it like to be in a, a um, oh, what do they call them? Uh, we crossed the desert in a, help me here, um, covered wagon. That's oh, what it okay. was. He's like, mom, what was it like to be in a covered wagon? And I'm like, laughing and I'm like laughing till I'm crying. And I'm like, honey, I can answer a lot of things, but I really wasn't there then. <laughs> yeah. We but, might be old, but we're not right. that old. Yeah. So, you know, it's the concept that kids have. Yeah. Let's change their concept. Let's, let's share the stories. I mean, yeah, for sure. how, how many wonderful stories are out there that we could do a whole sequel on these books, just one after the other of sharing with little kids. We, we tell them we have little, we have storybooks about, about Jesus and, and our belief systems and things like that. But let's tell them the wisdom that and where it came from, where we came from. That's exactly right. And this is this is all part of what we have to do in our country, which is right. the, one of the reasons why we have a disconnect between the old and the young is because we're, the young are being told that the old have uh, intolerant notions on race, on religion, on sexuality, on gender, on all this stuff, they're being taught not to listen to seniors. Right. Because the seniors bring this baggage with them, right? right. The baggage that they call CRT or all these types of things. And, mm -hmm. you know, this hostility towards truth, towards tradition, is, 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 is our biggest threat as a country. So I think uh, you're doing it the right way. Do it through your show which we're honored to have on CPAC now. Do it through books. Do it through your life. Do right. it through the organizations you're going to support. But we have to go back to this idea that what happened before 
is actually probably good. Well, it has and, to and, be. And, and what we have is the feeling of what happened before is almost always bad because what happened before uh, always is included within the context of their time right. where things uh, weren't perfect. Right. And people had, did have incorrect notions. So that means you discard all the past right. and you discard anybody who went through it. I, that's outrageous. If I were a senior, I'm 54. If I had another 20, 25 years on me and I was is essentially my life was canceled because I might have lived through segregation of the South or whatever the whatever the exactly. thing is. Why? Why does my life have to be canceled? Why does my voice not matter anymore? Right. By the way, the white people who live through the segregated South, the black people who who live through the segregated South, I actually think kids would benefit from talking to all the people involved. Right, exactly. And, and you know, the thing is, is I can give them the whole picture. Yes. And by and, the way, some of those white people uh -huh. might have had a notion in, uh, you know, in, in, you know, from that time, and they might have a different notion today. Absolutely. People change. Absolutely. Why do you have to throw the whole thing out? Why do you have to say... Just discard people. You know, in Israel, just so you know, in Israel, in Jerusalem, there is a Washington Street and a Lincoln Street. But they don't, say Link, they don't say Lincoln, right? They call it Lincoln or something. Uh -huh. they, they say it wrong. But the point is, they're not ripping the, any of that down. No. And they're, the whole world is looking in confusion at America. Right. And saying, none of us are taking our statues right, down. Right, right. By the way, there's no more controversy. There's no place in the globe that's got more controversies than this place, right, Jerusalem. Right, absolutely. And even they aren't ripping their stuff down. Right. We just, I just went to Paris with my daughter. No one's ripping statues down in Paris, even with the bad kings and the bad people. Right, They're right. They're all up. Right. We're the, we're the only country on the face of the globe, unless it's a communist country, that is all about erasing parts right. of their history and erasing their people. And we've essentially erased seniors in America because the art schools are teaching the kids that, you know, if your dad is plus 55 and he's a white guy and maybe a Christian, maybe straight, or whatever the things they don't like, you know, don't listen to him. Right. Because he's right. teaching you intolerance. Right. We have to end that, Elaine. Because well, we're going to lose the whole country. Yeah, I think the thing is, is, it's so important for us to understand that all this boils down to is the simple fact that there is one God and we share him with the Judeo-Christian yep. country that we are. Yep. We share all of this mm -hmm. and that it all leads to the Bible and the Bible is where our values and principles come from. And when we started shoving that to the side and we pushed it out of schools and did all of this, we only hurt ourselves. But you know what? It's never, ever too late to call upon the Lord and ask for his help. That's right. Ever. That's right. And there's nothing, zero, that is too big for him. Yeah. And there is nothing that he wants more than for his people to turn back to him and look to him. That's right and call out to him. And we're gonna do it, and we're gonna do it in yeah. droves, and we're gonna do it because we're coming together. And I found out the hard way that the voice is not on the internet, on yeah. the screen, as yeah. they call it here. What That voice is on the airwaves, and person to person. Yeah. Get out, meet everybody, That's right. share with them, love them, That's right. live by the golden rule, let's get Back to the golden rule. Yeah. There is nothing like it. Yeah. Thank you, Matt, for sharing this time with me and giving me an opportunity to open my show on your show the best way. And I I just I just feel so blessed that God has put me and made me part of CPAC and now CPAC now. So thank you for being on this delegation. Thank you for coming here. Uh, I think it's going to change your life. I think it's going to change Amen. my life. Mm -hmm. And we got a lot of important work to do. Yes, we do. Yeah. And we will continue it. So thank you all for coming. And God bless you. We will be praying for you. <laughs>